I want to talk to you about funeral services because I, I, I don't know Haitian. I, I don't know if I, I have the stomach to do something like that. But you're, you're learning about embalming, processing the body, and all like that. Like, is this like a a a, a school? that has actual dead carnivores there or is it like y'all working on dummies or something like that no actually it's, it's, it's it is a college it is a college course it's an associate's degree it's a two-year program and um, the reason why i'm in it hands-on is because i know people in the industry you know what i'm saying so i have access you know to doing my stuff while i'm in school because you have to have X amount of bodies when you're doing your apprenticeship on how many bodies. But the bodies are not cadavers that's in the schools, no. They're actually in the funeral homes or if you're in the hospital and you're working in the morgue. So, no, I'm doing the actual, this is not no, you know, like a practice. No, it, it ain't no practice. This is the, the actual real deal. You know, mixing the chemicals, doing the actual environment. And I'm only doing it in a funeral home because... I'm working under a licensed funeral director. So I'm actually getting my training hands on. But not everybody has that, you know what I'm saying, has that advantage. They don't have that. That's why it's good to, you know, know people. and You know, that it's good to network and know people and, you know, build relationships. Because with the trucking shit, trucking is always going to have its up and downs. But you, the way the industry is and the way of the world right now, we all have to have more than one or two things under our belt. That's a far cry, trucking. <laughs> and then and then up all of a sudden, like, yo, I want to go into a mortuary. mortuary <laughs> like that. And you be surprised. It's more, I'm, I'm learning and seeing more and more black women coming out here. It's more and more black women coming into the industry, believe it or not. As I said at the start, you really have to have a stomach for this, right? Absolutely, because you get different kind of cases. You can go pick up a body that a landlord, you know, having you know seen a tenant, and you go pick that body up. You can't. The, the, the body is so decomposed, depending on the temperatures in the house or in the apartment, that person, or they could be so bloated that if you pick them up, you know what I'm saying, with your partner, if you even have a partner, they could, they body could even explode on you. Because remember, we mostly fluid. And you know, once you die, all of your cells they start wilding out, and it's it could be it could be here. Yeah, you definitely gotta have a stomach for it. You know, in clean cases, you watch a person die; they go through hospice and stuff like that. But not all cases is like that. What about when they've been in an accident? All that, all it's, it's, you definitely have to have a stomach for it. But it's a part of life. You know what I mean? Well, it's like the old saying goes: somebody got to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I, I, I like it because it's like I give, you know, families closure. I give them closure. I don't have the skills for everything. Like, I'm not into makeup. So it'll be another mortician that's in that field that, you know, do that part. Or some funeral homes, they actually have a cosmetologist that does the hair and makeup because, you know, they may have an embalmer on site or a funeral director on site that may not. Like, yo, I can't make her look like this. You know what I mean? Because being a makeup artist is a skill. skill. So what were some of the worst cases that you doing your training? What what are some of the worst cases that you that you came across? And what about worst cases like like young ones, older ones? Young young black women in the hood that, you know, that's overdosing. Uh, how long their body's been there decomposing, you know, where animals is eating at, eating away at them that are homeless. And like I mentioned before, talking about the elderly person, that's those are worst cases because we live in a world right now where nobody don't even check up on nobody or call nobody no more. So you don't even know how long they've been there. So you may go pick up a person and you'd be like, oh, I'm here to, I'm the funeral home and I'm here to pick up. And then you go pick the person up and it's like, they face is fucked up. They don't even look like the person. You know, depending on how they went out, it could be a person, you know, like, say, for instance, diabetes. They died. They dead. Nobody knows that they passed away. They've been there for a couple of days. The insulin in your body going to start, you know, doing its thing. Because some cells, not all cells, recognize that you're gone. 
You know what I mean? Because it's the heart and your lungs that's pumping everything and circulating and shit. But sometimes the brain hasn't recognized, like, yo, this motherfucker not breathing no more. Like, yo, what's good? The cells, some of the cells don't pick that up. That's like when, and when the cells do, you know, like when you're watching a horror movie or some shit, you see the, the, the mummified person with long fingernails and long hair. Those cells actually, when you, you know, pass on, those cells, they still are alive for fucking six months. Wow. But it is fun. It is fun. Wait, 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 life. wait, wait. How can you say that? That's, how can you say that? I know you're going to school for it and, you, and everything, but at the same time, is there some type of, like, mental therapy that you got to go through to? Like, like when, when we sign no. up for, some like... Some people have that after, like a PTSD type of thing, like the trauma. They go... What, no, no, go no, 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 pause, pause. No. What that, is, like, how we sign up for like police work and some other work like a psych evaluation yeah like a psych yeah 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 that's nope. it that's it do you guys have to you go through that or through a grad. therapist nope. nope you go through high school you got your credentials and you take them classes it's like regular school it's like regular school it's is there somebody the there that's like telling you like not to take this type of work home or anything like that it's on it's it's up to the actual individual. You shouldn't take work home anyway, and you shouldn't take home to work and vice versa. You're not supposed to do that into anyway. Right, right, right. But you unfortunately, know how somebody separate. does, though. Some some people well, do. They do that shit all the time. They do it all the time, and that you know, the time passed. People are so immature; they don't respect boundaries. You know what I mean? Like some people that you know, like I live in Connecticut. There's a lot of popular people that's floating around when they have a death. You know, you're supposed to keep it's keep that stuff confidential. You're not supposed to be bragging out being like, yo, I did so and so body it did it nah. But unfortunately you do have people that like to run their mouth like that. And I don't, that's the sad part about it. You know, even you can't even really rest in peace. But like I said, it's something that I enjoy. Why? Because I get to give people closure. This is the last time they're gonna see their loved one. You know what I mean? So you know, when you have cases like an accident and they have to go under reconstruction, that ain't nothing but wax, like literal wax. And you just playing around with the wax and shaping and molding. And then the makeup artist got to come behind you to jazz it up to make you look like your regular self. What about what, what about getting them ready for cremation? Is it the same process? Well, I mean, once they had a funeral and cremation... They just, yeah, it's like a, it's like a cardboard box that they have you in after your memorial service or whatever the case may be, and then, uh, and then um, they, at the crematory, they have a special bay that they put you in, and that, that, yo, know, that oven is all piping hot. It's just flames, and they just push your ass in there, and, and call, it. and call it the day. Yeah, I, I know you, I know you in school, and you still learning about this, but what about for bodies that are unaccounted for? Like, what do y'all do with them, or what what do they do? Not to be funny, that's something that happens all the fucking time. That's something that happens all the time when people, you know, what I'm saying they don't they don't they don't have the money. That's what I was saying when I mentioned about the insurance. When they don't have the money, your body be sitting at the damn funeral parlor, and it's like, okay, what the fuck do we do with this person? That you really, literally, once you're embalmed, you're preserved. Not all funeral homes even have freezers. So your body just be sitting there waiting. There's one mortician I know that did a funeral with a young man that passed away. This was a while ago. This was an incident that happened in Massachusetts. The lady, black family, of course, they came through, identified, you know, yeah, they, they made arrangements that, yeah, this is how they want X, Y, and Z to be done and taken care of. The lady ain't never come back. So the guy, you know, he thought he was doing something right. It was his license, his funeral home. He had an actual service for him, even went to the cemetery, come on now, and got a plot for him. Did a burial and everything. That's right after all of that happened, a few months after, this is when the aunt comes with some money. You know, old boy lost his license and got sued. Wow. That's crazy. And like I said, and it, and, it, and it was a black, it was a black woman that did all of that. So it's like, you, you got to really be careful. I mean, what do you think? Did we just put the bodies right there and they just left on standby? Fuck no. Like, look at when we had COVID, when we were going through the pandemic. You know what I mean? They, these funeral homes, 
and the hospitals, they had to get reefer trailers. Them bodies were stacked. I mean, can you imagine a 53-foot trailer stacked with bodies? In? Mind you, ain't nothing organized about that shit. They're stacked in there, like how the fuck we was on them slave ships. People don't think about that shit. They too busy out living life out here, wilding out, and not thinking about how they're going to, you know, make sure they got their preparations and they, you know, stuff in order. But I like it because it's peaceful. If you're around a different crowd of people, you know what I mean? You're around other morticians. You know, I do wish to maybe hopefully one day own my own shit. My trucking, my CDL, I will never let that go. I grew up in that industry. That's how my father took care of me and my brother. You know what I mean? I respect truckers. I respect the industry, and it's something that I love. I love to see, you know, the long noses out there, the old school trucks out there. I don't like the new trucks. But other than that, you know, this is my life, and this is the direction that I'm in. And we all, you know, you got a heartbeat, then you got a purpose. You just got to figure that shit out. How much is it, and how do you come across getting into schooling for for being a more chicken? Mortuary? Yeah, more mortuary. Well, not all mortuary. colleges. Not all colleges in all states actually have that course. It, it Depending on this college, it could be a private college like Goodwin University where I attend, or it could be something like McAllister. They want some bread. They want some big bread for that degree. I'm talking about 40 stacks, easy. Or you could, they have them in community colleges like down in Miami, Florida. You know what I mean? You just got to do your own research and do your own homework. Nassau County Community College, I think they got it for like maybe 10 bins. Florida got it for six. You just got to do your homework it, because some states don't have the course. Some of them, they don't get it. I don't know what's wrong with them. You see this big ass machine in front of you and you still want to be riding on their ass or don't want to fucking right. get them room. Like, make it make sense. Right. But, but nah, it's, it's all right. You know, like you said, you ask the question like, yo, you, you got to have a stomach for that. Yeah, you got to have a yeah, stomach for I, that. Yeah, I, I, I just think getting in into something like that, not only that you have to have the mindset for it, but you also have to have the, the stomach for it. You said in our earlier conversation that you and a partner go out there to retrieve the body. Now, when y'all get the body, y'all y'all bring it in, y'all prepare it, y'all y'all empty it out, and all like that. And this is all hands on. So you're like intern, right? Yeah, I'm actually I'm there. And when you say clean it out, I'm glad you said that because a lot of people think that morticians or people at the funeral home. They're the ones that do the autopsies. No, we're not. The autopsies are done by pathologists, the medical examiners, the coroner's office. The funeral service doesn't do that. The funeral service job is to preserve the body. So when a person is picked up from a medical examiner's office versus a different case, like a body that's active, like at a hospital or a nursing home or in a home, the bodies that's at the medical examiner's office once they finish examining everything you know they do the wide cut and they you know got all your they throw your shit right in the fucking trash bag and put you put the organs right back in the trash bag in your you know torso cavity and then that's it that's when we come pick you up and then we bring you to the funeral home and then we either dispose of the organs or we depending on if you want them with you. That's why you have that organ donor symbol on your license and stuff. You just, it's kind of hard to explain because you have, there's so much stuff, steps to prepping the body. You get your last final shower, your last final wash as you on that table. The table is like a, um, it's a stainless steel. It's just like a cart. On and your head is on a big ass brick. It's almost similar to like a, a cement block. Yo, it's, it's crazy, but it's a part of life. And like you said, somebody got to do it. You get your final wash and then you get preserved. You mix the chemicals, you know what I'm saying, to make sure that you're getting the right coloring in, you know, for your complexion. And then that's it. Once that, you know, the chemicals get pushed in, they push the rest of that blood out, the remaining blood out of your system. That's it. My last question before we get on up out of here. How do you feel about these modern funerals now? Like a traditional funeral is 
the viewing of the body. The body is in the casket. The body is presented presentable for the family and friends to pay their respects and their goodbyes. But what about these new modern funerals now that they actually got these, got the bodies propped up, they're sitting playing PlayStation, they're sitting up playing cards, they're sitting up riding them yeah. what, what, what's your thoughts on that because i as as i seen them and they beginning to be a little bit more popular now i i, I don't know if i want to be on display like that what, what's your thoughts on it you got to keep up with modern times you got to keep up with modern times you got to keep that person's personality going you know what i mean keep it memorable because in the beginning they used to just have, if you notice them old school churches, right next to it is the damn cemetery. That's how it was back in the day. The person died, they had a service, right, and they get buried right there. That's why if you go in them old ass towns, you see them old ancient churches, right next to it is the cemetery. So yeah, you got to keep up. You got to keep up with the technology and the way things are right now. One last question. I know I said that, that was the last question, but one last question, man. What do you, well, now that is the 20th century, Social media has taken over just about everything. I, I I don't care what nobody say. Social media took over everything. Yeah. What's your feelings about now people going to funerals and breaking out the cameras and recording and stuff like that? What, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, if you want to be, you got to be respectful about it. You can't stop people from recording stuff. You can't have, ask them to please be respectful. And the funeral parlors, they need to, you know, enforce that because some of them videos, they get a little out of hand. There's no respect no more. Once that internet shit got the way it is right now, this shit is fucking bananas. There's no privacy in anything anymore. Just be a little mindful, that's all. But the recording, yeah, you want that because you want to be able to go back and look at that. You want to be able to go back and see it. You might not want to see it at the moment or you might not want to deal with it at the moment. But when you have some alone time in the future, you're going to want to see that. You're going to want to see it. Because guess what? You got some people, they haven't had closure. They haven't grieved. Because they're so busy with this shit called life. They keep moving around. But when they sit down, they they might want to check that video out. Whether it was a wild out video or a, a respectful formal video, they still going to want to see it eventually. So I don't mind that stuff is getting recorded. That shit on social media, that shit is fucking bananas. But you still got to respect the shit. It's like if you know better, you're going to do better. That's basically how I look at it. And on that note, let me get on up out of here. I appreciate it. I appreciate the time. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes, look Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.